The Canon EOS 7, which is the flagship APS-C or crop sensor camera for the Canon EOS R lineup is as good as they come, but is it a camera that should be considered in the rankings as professional? Now, I can stop this video right now, but I'm not going to, but yes, it is a professional camera. And I will take it a step further to say that it is a not only a professional photo camera, but it's a professional hybrid camera. And it's probably one of the best hybrid cameras you can get, even though it's an APS-C. Now I know there's gonna be some full frame warriors out there saying, well, it's not full frame. It can't be a professional camera. Once we get into it, you'll understand why this is not only a professional camera, but one of the best hybrid cameras that you can get. Shout out to my cat. The R7 is 32 megapixels, which is more than the R6, R6 Mark II. It's just under the R5, which is 45 megapixels. So it's, I think, second in the lineup when it comes to megapixels, but we all know that megapixels don't make a camera. You can still get great photos at 24, 20, sometimes even 18 or 16 megapixels. So what makes this camera better or professional versus the other professional full frame cameras? Now, before I get any further into this full transparency, this is not not a very in-depth technical review of the R7. This is just gonna be my personal experience and what I've used it for, and I've used it in kinda professional settings. I mean, I've gotten paid for my work using this camera, so I guess you can say that's professional, but that kinda depends on how you view professional, what has to be met, what needs have to be met in order to be considered professional. But anywho, so the ergonomics of the camera is great. It fits really well in your hand, especially when you pair it with a decently sized lens like a 35 millimeter that thing isn't going anywhere it's not going to fall at your hands it's going to be great for you in this camera you're going to have the option to create custom modes you have a c1 c2 c3 so you can create custom photo modes so if you want your first custom setting to be aperture priority and your second custom setting to be shutter priority and then your third custom setting to be whatever you can do that the autofocus you get on this camera is going to be just as good as the autofocus you get with a higher full frame level camera there's a reason that even though this is a crop sensor camera it is the flagship aps-c sensor camera for canon cameras in the video setting this shoots 4k and 4k fine which is 6k down sampled into 4k you can shoot at 24 30 and 60 frames per second but at 60 frames per second you can only shoot at regular 4k not 4k fine you can also shoot this at 120 frames per second at 1080p in this camera you can also shoot c log so you can shoot in a very flat profile and then you can grade your footage to get the look that you want this camera also has in-body image stabilization so when i made my last canon r7 video which actually wasn't even on this channel it was on my other channel go ahead and check that out if you want to they were saying that i should have went with the r8 but the r8 only has 24 megapixels versus the r7 having 32 the R8 does not have in-body image stabilization, the R7 does. So there's still some benefits that the R7 has over the R8 and even some of the other cameras like the regular R6. When you look at the in-body image stabilization on the Canon R7, this video I'm showing you right now was shot on a 16 millimeter lens. The 16 millimeter RF 2.8 does not have image stabilization in the lens, but the 35 does and the 24 does and the 85 does and then you also have your l series that have in-body image stabilization as well so if you wanted to pair the camera which has ibis and then pair it with the lens then you're going to get a little bit extra stabilization and sometimes it may be wonky sometimes it may not you know rock with you a little bit sometimes it may try to overcorrect and be a little bit more jittery when you have both on so you just have to be mindful of what you're shooting and how much you're moving and you know when it comes to ibis um and how much you want to stabilize i guess yo what's going on everybody i just wanted to hop in here real quick and talk to you about the giveaway that i talked about in my caption and in my description I'll be giving away two things in this video. One is the Tackstar SGC600, which you hear me recording on right now. So if you think it sounds pretty good, go ahead and drop your name and your Instagram handle down in the comment section, and I'll be picking a winner probably within the next week or two. And then the second thing I'm gonna be giving away is a light, uh, the Ulanzi VL49 light. I, I believe that's what it is. Um, it's in my bag, hold up. Yeah, so this, this light, right here um it goes around the top of your camera it has three uh cold shoe mounts on either side and then it's a full rgb and it has a magnet on the back as well so two budget things that i'm giving away you can find the SGC 600 for like 35 dollars or something like that and this light was all of 20 20 some odd dollars something like that not too bad but 
if you want to get by and not have to pay for something and you want to win something free then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel drop your comment and your instagram handle down in the comment section below and i'll be doing the random name generator thing whatever and i'll be picking a winner um after that so if you see this video within the next week or two weeks then drop your name subscribe drop your instagram handle and i'll reach out to you via instagram if you want so this is something cool i want to do to give back to y'all i appreciate y'all for just being here i mean if 49 people sat in the room right now and said yo we like your stuff then i mean that's all i need to really keep going so appreciate y'all and now back to the rest of the video and even the autofocus and video mode is really fast so if you need to catch an eye and you're tracking subjects that's going to be really really good this camera is definitely tailored to sports photographers wildlife photographers and videographers so if you have to track fast moving subjects like football basketball hockey you're going to be in good hands with this camera now one thing about the APS-C sensor camera is that the low light capability may not be as good as a full frame camera but you'll be able to raise the iso a little bit more than regular like you can go to probably 800 1600 maybe two or five thousand and still have a pretty clean image if you're in a low light setting and you need to get a little bit more light to your subjects. I've had this Canon R7 ever since January. I bought it after I bought my initial camera, which is the Canon EOS R50, which is another crop sensor camera, but it's one of the entry level ones. So I definitely wanted to make the jump because I found myself doing a lot more quote unquote professional work. I bought the R50 because I thought I was just gonna do talking head videos like this. And I found myself taking a lot more pictures than just talking head videos. So now that kind of went into me building my whole website, uh, starting a business and making money off of my work. So the R7 is, in my opinion, a professional camera. So if people are saying, is the R7 a professional camera? Absolutely it is, it absolutely is. And some people are gonna say, well, you can't do weddings or you can't do super high ticket event with a crop sensor camera says who if if you believe that and you want to spend the extra money for a full frame camera not even the extra money because this is still fourteen hundred dollars so you're still going to be that middle of the road price but if you want to be one of those people that believe that you have to have a full frame camera in order to shoot a wedding i mean do you but i've seen some photographers get some really clean quality images off of a crop sensor camera. One of the main ones being a guy who lives just about 30, 45 minutes away from me, John Branch for photography. He's only shot on crop sensor cameras. Um, he shoots Fuji, he doesn't shoot Canon, but you know, that's Fuji is still a very quality brand, but he's only shot crop sensors and he still gets good photos. So I don't think that you need to have a full frame camera in order to do high ticket items. I believe you can still do three, four or $5,000 ticket items and have a crop sensor camera. But that's it for this video. I appreciate y'all tuning in. The Canon R7 is definitely a professional camera. Go ahead and pick you one up from Amazon. It's $1,400 right now. I am not affiliated. I'm not sponsored or anything. I mean, I only have 49 subscribers. There's no shot I'll be sponsored by anybody because nobody knows me yet. But don't knock crop sensors till you try them. Will I go full frame eventually? I mean, maybe the Canon R5 is my dream camera right now. I know the R1's coming out soon, but I honestly don't like the built-in battery grip. I, I just don't like the look of it. So I might not ever get it unless it just absolutely blows my mind. I might rent it when it comes out just to see, just so I can probably make a video about it. Um, you know, get some clickbait views. You know how that go. <laughs> but appreciate y'all tuning in. And yeah, until next video, I'm gonna holla at y'all.